Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here with our examples video on homogeneous first order differential equations. We've got three examples we're going to work in this video. We've got them up here. If you want to skip to one in particular in the video, you can go ahead and see which one you'd like to look at and check that out. Otherwise, you can just work straight through with us as we go. So for each of these, we'll actually be testing that it is homogeneous and then we'll be solving the equation. For our first example here, dy dx equals x cubed plus y cubed all over xy squared. Remember our test for being homogeneous, we plug in tx everywhere there's an x, and we plug in ty everywhere there's a y, and we should reduce to the original statement, and if we do then we're homogeneous. So we go ahead and plug in tx for x, we go ahead and get t cubed x cubed for the first term plus plugging in ty for y here would give us t cubed y cubed. And then on the bottom we have x and we have y squared. So what happens is when we plug in tx for x, we get that. And plugging in ty for y, we get t squared y squared. And I think that you can probably see each of these is going to have a t cubed in it, reducing. So we will get the original statement or dy dx, and we know that this is homogeneous. Now remember, if our equation is homogeneous, then we will use the substitution y equals vx. And remember, the product rule then gives us, we will replace dy with v dx plus x dv. We'll go ahead and substitute all of that in here. So we'll get v dx plus x dv on the top. On the bottom, we'll have dx still equals x cubed. And now we're replacing y with vx, so this would be vx all cubed, which would be v cubed x cubed over x. And then y squared would be this vx squared, which would be v squared x squared. And now you might notice what happens, right? We have x cubed in all of these pieces. This x times x squared really gives us x cubed. So we'll reduce x cubed from all of these. So if we write down what we have from that, we'll have v dx plus x dv over dx is equal to 1 plus v cubed over v squared. Let's go ahead and split this up. We'll take 1 over v squared and v cubed over v squared. So we'll say v dx plus x dv over dx is equal to 1 over v squared plus v cubed over v squared would just be v. And now I need to start separating my variables. Remember this should become a separable equation. I'm going to multiply my dx to the other side. So we'll say we're going to multiply that by dx and get rid of that on the bottom there. Now think about what we'll need to do. I'll need to subtract v dx from this side to get all my dx terms together. I already have a v dx over here. So when I subtract v dx from both sides, I will just get x dv is equal to 1 over v squared dx. We are almost separated. I'll multiply my v squared to the other side. I'll divide my x to the other side. So we'll actually get v squared dv is equal to 1 over x dx. And now it's separated. So I can go ahead and integrate both sides with respect to their variables. Antiderivative of v squared dv would be 1 third v cubed equal to antiderivative here will be a log rule. We'll get ln of x. I'll put my constant of integration on this right-hand side here. And now we just want to solve this for y. So I'm going to go ahead and replace my v cubed. So this will be 1 third. Remember that y was equal to vx, right? So v is equal to then y divided by x. So I'll replace my v with y over x. So I have 1 third y cubed over x cubed is equal to ln of x plus c. We'll multiply by 3x cubed on both sides. So we'll get y cubed is equal to 3x cubed times ln of x plus our constant. We could go ahead and cube root, right? So we get that y is equal to the cube root, if we like, of all of this, 3x cubed times the quantity ln of x plus our constant.
Let's look at our next one here, dy dx is equal to x plus y all over x minus y. So to make sure this is homogeneous, we'll go ahead and plug in tx everywhere there's an x there, and ty everywhere there's a y. That will give us tx plus ty over tx minus ty. You could factor out the t certainly on the top and the bottom. You get t times x plus y over t times x minus y, and you can reduce the t's and you'll see we get the same thing in our equation here, so we know we're homogeneous. We'll use y equals vx for our substitution, and product rule tells us then that dy is equal to v dx plus x dv. So these are the substitutions we make for homogeneous first order. Over here, let's do it v dx plus x dv in for dy over dx. On the right side, x plus y becomes x plus vx. On the bottom, x minus y becomes x minus vx. What we'll go ahead and do is reduce x from both of these. So think about right here, we're going to do x times one plus v, and this would be x times one minus v. So we'll go ahead and reduce our x's there. So we'll get v dx plus x dv all over dx is equal to one plus v over one minus v. All right, now that we're reduced, I need to go ahead and focus on separating the variables. I'll multiply my dx to the other side, and then getting all of the dx terms on one side means I need to subtract my v dx over there. So we'll get x dv is equal to one plus v over one minus v, and then we would subtract v dx over here, so this would be another minus v, all times dx there. And what I think I'll do from here, think of this over one and get a common denominator. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll have x dv is equal to one plus v over one minus v, minus v times one minus v over one minus v. So we've gotten a common denominator on the right here. And now let's do some simplifying. So x dv is equal to, we would have one plus v over this, minus v times one would be minus v. So this minus v is gonna get rid of this plus v. And then I would have minus v squared, but there's a minus in front of that, so that would actually be plus v squared. So we get one plus v squared on the top over one minus v dx. Okay, that's a little nicer to separate, right? So we're almost separated. I'll go ahead and divide by x to get the x over here. To get this fraction over on the side with dv, I'll multiply by the reciprocal. So I will get 1 minus v over 1 plus v squared dv is equal to dx over x. And now we'll take the antiderivative, right? Integrate both sides with respect to their variable. For this dv integral, I'm going to go ahead and actually split this up. So I'm going to say this is the integral of 1 over 1 plus v squared minus v over 1 plus v squared dv. I think our integral on the right side is okay. Uh, for this one, this is just going to be an inverse tangent rule, right? So this is going to be inverse tangent of v. And then for here, for this one, let's use a u substitution. So if u is one plus v squared, then du is going to equal two v dv. I have a negative v here, so I would need to divide by negative two to get what I need there. So that would actually be minus one half integral of du over u then is equal to, this is going to just become ln of x, right? plus c, and you can see that this du over u is also going to be another log rule, right? So we'll get the inverse tangent of v minus one half ln of u equals ln of x plus c. Let's go ahead and at least back substitute here. We'll do this one at a time. So inverse tan of v minus one half ln of absolute value of u, one plus v squared is always gonna be positive, so I don't really need the absolute value there, I think. So we'll say that equals ln of x, there I do need it, plus c. 
And now let's go ahead and replace our v at least back in terms of y. So remember our original substitution was y equals vx, right? So that tells us that v is equal to y over x. So we'll go ahead and say inverse tangent of y over x minus half ln of one plus y squared over x squared equal to ln of our absolute value of x plus c. You can do some additional things where you move the log over and deal with the one half as a power and combine some of the log stuff if you like. We'll just go ahead and stop there on that one. I think you get the idea for that second one. Looking at our last one, dy dx equals y times the quantity ln y minus ln x all over x. Now this one to you may not look homogeneous at first, but we will show you. So we'll plug in tx everywhere there's an x and ty everywhere there's a y. So we would get ty times the quantity ln of ty minus ln of tx all over tx. So first thing we want to notice is the t's on the outside will reduce, so there's our y over x part. Now what about this ln ty minus ln tx? Well ln ty is the same as ln of t plus ln of y. Remember that product rule for logs. You can separate the logs and it becomes sum. Minus, so that's the first ln here. ln of tx would be ln of t plus ln of x, right? So you can see here I've got ln of t plus ln of y minus ln of t minus ln of x. ln t's will reduce and then we'll get ln y minus ln x which is what we started with before, right? So this is homogeneous. So remember our substitution here is y equals vx and dy equals product rule vdx plus xdv. Let's plug all that stuff in. So we'll get vdx x dv all over dx, that's our dy dx, equals y is vx, so we get vx out here, times the quantity ln vx minus ln x all, all over x. Now the x's will reduce here, right, just like our t's did over here. And we also want to think about simplifying our ln terms in the same way that we did with our t terms over there. So we'll have vdx plus xdv all over dx v times ln v plus ln x using the product property for logs there, minus ln x. So we get plus ln x and minus ln x reducing. So we'll end up with v dx plus x dv over dx is just equal to v ln v. And now I'm going to multiply my dx to the other side. So we'll get rid of that and we'll have v dx plus x dv equals v ln v dx. dx over here, dv here, so let's move this v dx over. So we'll subtract that to the other side. We'll say x dv is equal to v ln v minus v dx. And we're close to being separated now, right? So giving ourselves some more room. If I divide by x and divide by what's in parentheses here, we will get dv over v ln v minus v equals dx over x. Okay, here we'll integrate both sides. This is an easy log rule here. This one here, I think we might want to think of this as the integral of dv over v times ln of v minus 1. We'll factor out the common v there. And if you look at that integral for a second, do you see how it will be done? We will actually use u substitution here. u is equal ln of v minus 1. Works out nicely because du, the derivative of ln v, is 1 over v. So it becomes dv over v. Obviously, derivative of negative 1 is 0. So this part becomes our du, and then we get over u, right? So let's go ahead and do this over here. So we'll actually get the integral of du over u for this one. 
is equal to the integral of dx over x. And that's convenient, I guess, right? So we'll get ln of u is equal to ln of x plus c. We'll put our c over on just the right here. And now let's unsub our u. So going back to v's, we would have ln of ln of v minus 1 equals ln of x plus c. We could take the exponential of both sides, so that would give us e to that and e to that. We would end up with ln of v minus 1 is equal to e to the ln x plus c. Now you'll notice we could use properties of exponents there. So ln of v minus 1 is equal to e to the ln of absolute value x times e to the c. We would get absolute value x here. This would just be some constant, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and make the case here that uh, c can be positive or negative, so we'll just say cx here instead of c absolute value x. And then we're almost finished, right? So let's go ahead and I guess at some point let's replace our v. Remember that y was equal to vx. So v here is equal to y over x. So think about where we're heading, right? This is ln of y over x minus 1 equals cx. So let's we'll add the 1, I guess, right? So we'll say ln of y over x is equal to cx plus 1. And now to get rid of our ln, we'll do an exponential again. So that will reduce the ln. We'll get y over x is equal to e to the cx plus 1. And the last thing to do is multiply by x, right? So we get y is equal to x times e to the cx plus 1.